So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make some sticker style typography, just like is shown right here on my screen inside Adobe Illustrator. And what's cool with a design like this is it can be used on t-shirts, could be used on stickers, could be used on posters. It's super versatile and very impactful. And also when making it, there's just a ton of cool skills you can learn in Illustrator by reproducing this sort of look. So I'll start out by saying the font I'm using is called King Things Pet Rock. And it's a totally free font to use. So if you want to check out the link in the description, go and download that before we get started, feel free to do so. But what I'm showing you will work with absolutely any font. So totally up to you. And also what's cool about this workflow is in this example right here, if I highlight it and change the type to say live, you can see that it's totally editable still. Although this example here, I have flattened down in case you need to do that. I will show you how to flatten it completely to make it a bit more friendly in your illustrator, but you can go in and change this effect at any point in time, which is just a cool bonus to this particular workflow. So in order to recreate what I've made, I'm just going to move this off to the side. I will say it'll be helpful for you to have your properties window open. So I'm going to drag that over here on my screen and to open up the properties window. If it's not already open, just go to window and then from window, go to properties about three quarters of the way down. If you don't see a check mark, it means it's not on your screen. So just click it. If you do see a check mark, it's somewhere on there. So just find it. But the first thing you need to do is to type out the text in whatever font you want. So I'm just going to duplicate this by holding alt as I drag down, or if you're using a Mac holding option as you drag down, and I'm actually going to use the properties window while that is selected. Oops. I went to libraries and inside that properties window, there will be a paragraph section. You want to change the alignment to align center. It just makes it a bit easier for the next step because in my example, there's three letters by three letters by three letters. You can decide how you want this type to be stacked or not stacked. It works just fine either way. But what I like to do is have it align center. So as I go in here and double click and then move my cursor between the letters, I want to shift below. I can just hit enter and then they're automatically centered. So I'll do that for each of these. So we now have it on three separate lines, but feel free to do whatever you think looks best for you. And the next thing we're going to want to do using the properties window is to use the adjustment for the letting and letting is basically the amount of space between the baseline to the baseline. So this line right here to this line right here. And on this particular font, it's pretty substantial as its base point. So the letting icon will look like an A with an A with a little arrow going up and down. And I'm just going to hold the down arrow here to make it smaller because you can see it in real time. It's pretty fast to get this looking a lot closer to what you want it to look like. So get that to be close enough. And once you're happy with the spacing between each individual line, kind of like what we have right here, you can feel free to stop. And of course, if you want to adjust that as you get going, that's no problem. You can do it at any point in time. But unlike the example that I have off to the left here, I also moved around the spacing of the letters in order to make them feel a bit more comparable in their spacing. Like right now, there's almost like a diagonal line. If I draw this going kind of like this, where it seems to have a somewhat atypical flow to the overall letters. So in order to fix that, I actually really like using something called the touch type tool. So when you select the type in your properties window, go down to the character section, and then there'll be a three dot menu that'll say more options. If you click that, it'll bring up more options, including the touch type tool. So as soon as you click the thing that says touch type tool, you can then start clicking on the individual letters. And what I like to do is just use my keyboard left and right arrows. So I'm sure they're moving exactly horizontally and you can just click the arrow left or right. Right now I'm clicking it right in order to adjust the letters. So if you click the first letter and click left, it'll actually shift all that type over to the left. And then you can start moving these individual letters until they have a spacing that looks pretty decently good to you. I'm just going to do this fairly fast for the purpose of the tutorial, but go in here and play around with it. The touch type tool is really awesome. It's really fast and easy to use. So just use the left and the right arrow keys to shift the type around. And remember the very first letter is where you can shift the whole thing to the left or the right. And the letters next to it will basically respect that spacing no matter what you do. So as you can see, it's really fast to go in here and make some pretty decent adjustments to how the overall type looks up to you. What you think looks good. Maybe the font you have look totally fine to you without needing to do this step. But if you're a stickler for details, so to speak, then it's something that you can do inside the tool. But that is it for the basic portion of getting the type ready. From here, we can go ahead and do some additional effects, which will ultimately lead to this cool 3D extruded look that we have right here.
So now that we have our type good to go, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure your type is selected. And then what I like to do is actually remove the fill completely. So in the properties window, there's an appearance section with a fill. You can click on that swatch and then just go ahead and in the upper left-hand corner, typically there's a box that'll say none. If you highlight over it, it looks like a white box with a red diagonal line going through it. Just remove that fill. And I do this because it's just a work preference to how I've done this in the past and also because it kind of clears the settings for the next step. So in the appearance window as well, there's that three dot menu in the lower right hand side, which if you click, it'll open up your appearance window. And this is where we'll get to do some of the pretty cool stuff moving forward in order to create this cool 3D extrude that this particular example has. So as you do this, make sure your type is selected on your screen. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually add a fill which we just removed, but I like to do this all within the appearance window so it's very consistent in here. So I'm gonna add a fill, in which case it brings back that black color, but in order to emulate what I made before, I'm gonna click that fill and then change it to white using the menu. And the next step is to add a stroke, which will give us the baseline of doing the 3D extrude. So the stroke is in the bottom left-hand corner. It looks like a box with an outline. You can click that to add a stroke. In this case, it will bring it just above the fill, at least it did on my particular screen, but you can click, hold, and drag that below the fill, which is something that you're gonna to wanna to do so that the fill is visually on top of the stroke. This works just like a layering system in Photoshop or Illustrator layers. So the order in which things are here are the orders in which they will be as you look at them. So whatever's on top will be in the forefront. So the next step is just making sure you have stroke clicked and then clicking that up arrow until you start to fill in the stroke for these letters. In this case, I'm just gonna make this keep getting bigger and bigger until essentially all the white spaces between these letters fill up. It's up to you how thick you want this to be because you could also leave those spaces open or fill them in using the pen tool if you prefer that way. But this is the way that I'm pretty used to doing this. So it's how I'm gonna do it on this example. And also if you notice that there's really weird, long, jagged lines sticking out as you do this, you can fix that using the stroke window. And to get the stroke window open, you can just go to window and then from window, make sure stroke is selected. It's about three quarters of the way down. And there's a miter limit, which right now on my screen is set to four X, but you can just play around with that number. If you see really weird looking lines that you don't want to see. So if I change this to zero and hit enter, you can see that the lines sticking out change quite dramatically versus if I make this something like 10, in which case they're all back there. So a smaller number will reduce the amount of like jutting out of those lines. So up to you what you think looks good. Just go with whatever you think is best. But once you get this filled into a point that you think looks pretty good and you're happy with, we can do the next step, which is actually creating that 3D extrude. So once again, make sure your type is selected before doing any of this. If you start making changes and don't see them, it's because you didn't select the type. And then you're gonna wanna click on the stroke inside the appearance window. And once stroke is selected, you can actually hit this FX button for effects inside this appearance window. And then from there, go to distort and transform. And then from distort and transform, go to transform, which will bring up this transform effect window. And before you do anything, make sure you check the preview box in the lower left-hand corner so you can see what you're doing. But in order to create this effect, we're actually going to move this a bunch of times by copying it. So in the move section, you want to do something like 0.5 point by 0.5 point. It's a pretty good starting point, but it, this will also depend on how big your type is on your screen. So if you notice obvious, weird, jaggy repeats, you have to make this number smaller. So play around with this as you do it until it looks like you think it should. And then under copies, I'm gonna make this a pretty big number because it's gonna basically duplicate exactly what we have right here, that number of times creating this effect. So I'll do 50 and I'll see how this looks. And just to see how it looks, I'll hit enter, in which case it juts this off. And you can see there's now an extrude going to the lower right. And also if you hit enter like I did and you wanna go back to that transform window and make some changes, you can just click transform, in which case it'll open back up and you can go ahead and see this again. Just make sure you check preview. So I'm gonna make this something bigger even, like 75, and then I'll click off into a different box so it will do that effect without actually closing this window. And this actually looks pretty close to what I want, but I actually want this, instead of going to the lower right, I want the extrude to go to the lower left. And to do that, you just go to the horizontal box 
and instead of a positive number, make it a negative number, which will reverse what it's up to. So if I click in the vertical box, it applies that really fast and easy to do. So you can change these around. The same thing applies to the vertical. Right now it's going down, but if you want it to go up, make it a negative number, click through. You can see that happens in real time. So feel free to adjust this however you want. And once you get it in a pretty good spot, should be good to go. So you can hit okay. And this example on the right hand side actually has a further stroke, which is going around all of the type. And when it comes to making this stroke around the text, there's a couple different ways of going about it. So with the text selected and do make sure it's selected before you do this so you can see what's happening, just click, hold and drag the stroke that we created down. And right next to the trash can icon in the lower right, there's a page icon, which is to make a new layer and we'll basically duplicate the other stroke we have. So that went ahead and duplicated what we had before. Then I'll click on the new stroke that's on the bottom because we want this to be at the very back so it doesn't overlap the black we have on top. I'm going to click on the swatch for black and change it to the cyan that I used in the example. Feel free to use whatever color you want, of course, and then just make the stroke even bigger. So I'm gonna make this much bigger so we can start to see that as it goes on our text effect. So the only downside to doing this is we start to have a lot of complex effects that have a bunch of copies of stuff, which will ultimately slow down Illustrator a bit. But there is an alternative way as well, which will be much less resource intensive for Illustrator. So I'm going to delete this new stroke. And then I'm actually going to just zoom out a bit. I'm going to hold Alt on my PC, but if you're on a Mac, you can hold Option. And then I'm going to click, hold, and drag this off to the side, just so there's a duplicate copy of what we had before. Then I'm going to click back on this one that we just made, and I'm going to then right click and then create outlines. And I made a duplicate because the one I duplicated or copied, that's still live text. So if I want to change it later on, I can just use that, change it really fast and easy because once the text is outlined, you can't change it anymore. Whatever you have is exactly what you have. And then to fully flatten this thing out so we can have a much more simplified version of what's going on. I'm just going to go to object and then expand appearance. In this case, you can see all these little blue lines. These are all the times that we copied that type. And that's why this becomes a bit resource intensive is that there's a bunch of copies of all these paths going on. So to flatten this out next, you can go to object, expand, and then you want to expand both fill and stroke and hit okay once it does that. So now this has expanded out all the stroke and all the type that we have. And then the final step to fully flattening this out is while this is still selected in your properties window, there should be a pathfinder section. If you don't see it for some reason, you can also go to window and then pathfinder, but you want to click the three dots to show all the options. And then there's shape modes on top and pathfinders at the bottom. And what we're going to want to use is the one called merge, which will basically merge all these layers together. And we should hopefully end up with a result that looks exactly like what we started with, but with far, far, far fewer layers going on. So I'm going to hit that. It might take a little bit of time. It also might make my Illustrator window go black for a second as it does the processing required because this is quite an intensive process for Illustrator. But we'll see if Illustrator decides to crash or not, in which case it did not, which is awesome. So now we have a very different object where this is just a totally flat object where there's the black going on right here, as well as each individual white letter. So this is a far more simplified shape. And when this is selected in my appearance window, you can see it doesn't have all the different things we did before because we're starting fresh with just this new visual. So in this case, if I want to add that same cyan blue stroke, I can just go to add a stroke like we did before, drag that to the very bottom, which is just habit, making sure it's as low as it can be because we want it behind everything else. I can then click on this swatch and go back to the cyan that I had before. In this case, I don't have to make it a very big number at all because we're starting from this baseline starting point. So in this case, we now have a very simplified version of that artwork that we have before. And I can go ahead and make this as big or as small as I want. One of the cool things about using Illustrator, but that's really it for this tutorial. I think our end result looked very, very similar to what we started with on the right hand side. And the cool thing about making this is it shows you so many different cool things you can do in Illustrator, especially with the power of the properties window and appearance window. So I do hope that this video was helpful to you. And if this video was helpful to you, feel free to hit the like button to let me know and also consider subscribing to this channel. I do my best to keep for new content just like this so you can watch more in the future. And of course, if you have any further questions or comments, 
feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Maybe I or someone else can help you or give you feedback on whatever it is you're thinking about. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.